So how does this work in Excel's data types? If I go to the data tab, uh, you have organizations, um, and these are the ones that I added, so products and staff. So I also have these other two, <laughs> but uh, let's look at products and staff. So I can say, for example, Ross, Rachel, Monica, Chandler, and you can even misspell something and then it tries to guess. So if you have your data quite different to anything else, an organization is good enough. Otherwise, you can specify the exact one that you want. There you go. So it has n noticed that Phoebe is Phoebe and you can add a column. So I can add, for example, the costs. Uh, this does work best if you have your data in a table. So if you say this is a person and you just sort of go to insert table, press OK. Then if you add a new column like KG, this will actually give it a header as well. And you don't need to select the whole column to do it. You can just sort of add it there. You can also click here and access the card. The image URL, unfortunately, does not, for the time being, show up here, but you can click on this and it can take you to that image. So looking at another data set, I'm going to select these and I'm going to choose them and say that they are products. So notice I have a misspelling for eggplant. Let's see what it does there. It doesn't recognize it. It says no results found. Uh, sometimes it does pre-suggest some things, but it hasn't found it. If I type in the right one, then it can give me that. I can explore it further by clicking on that and seeing the details there. So let me just select that. I'm happy with it. Then from here, you can add, for example, the kilograms on hand. You can add the margin. Notice it does bring in the percentage data format as well. Or if you want to do it in with coding, you can do equals that one dot and then get all of these appearing there. So days fresh, for example, and then you can just drag that down. It is just a regular Excel formula like that. So if you want to get rid of it, you can right click on there and choose data type and convert to text, or you can change them one by one as well. This is, Microsoft have said, unfortunately, only available to E5 licenses, as are the other two options that I'm about to show within Excel. At this time, it is only a feature available with Excel beta version. So if you go to File and then Account from your Excel, I can see here that I have the beta version of version 2009. This means the year 2020 and the ninth month, which is September. So what you can do is you can go to get data and from Power BI, and this will look up the data sets rather than typing the, them out as examples. Now you have the endorsement there, so it is sorted, first certified, then promoted, and then the regular ones, casualties by selfie. <laughs> and here you have the data sets. So where you have this, this means the, the measures, and these mean the tables. There's only two tables here. Um, so it's a pretty simple data set. And I can say that I want to see the category. And then I want to see the deaths like this. Notice that when you have, for example, number of casualties in this field, if you click on that, then it will show it in the row labels. It won't show it in the value section. Now, in a normal pivot table, you can just drag this. But in this instance of link it to Power BI, it doesn't let you do that. So you need to have your measures explicitly defined. Otherwise, you cannot get them to enter. The other way is the same feature, just in a different place. If you go to insert, pivot table now is a drop down and you can choose from Power BI and it will load this same menu. Again, sorted by endorsement. So finally, if you don't have E5, how can you make this work? So this has been around for a while, but what you can do is you can go to a data set 
like this one and you can choose for example analyze in Excel then it's creating an Excel file that it downloads. It might ask you to download something to make this possible. And then within this specific Excel file, you can explore the data model. Click on enable content if prompted. And then you will get this loading up. So this is some movie data. So here I am in Power BI, and let me just show you the data. I've just got three tables, the staff table, the products table, and the sales table. And every sale has both a staff and a product attributed to it. And then I just have some simple measures for total cost, total sales, total quantity, profit, and then profit margin. So here is my dashboard. <laughs> So if you like this, how to create a chart with images, then I have another video that shows how to do that, that I'll link. Also, you'll even notice that Joey is actually moving a little bit. <laughs> so uh, here I have a, a few different visuals, uh, and we're going to look at how to get the data from here into Excel. So uh, what you have to do is you have to go back to the model view, and you need to go to the fields and extract that as well. Then for each of these, you have to say is featured table, say yes. So give it a description, uh, it's a required field. And select a row label. This uh, doesn't have to be unique, but it's quite rare that it wouldn't be unique. And then key column would probably be, needs to be a unique number says select with unique values. So in many cases, these two would be the same, which is fine. Uh, I guess hypothetically, it's okay to have duplicates if you have the odd one, but generally it just works better when they are both the same. So let me do the same for the products table. And select a row label here, it's just going to be the veg and the veg. Press okay. Now, uh, the hardcore Power BI people are not going to like this, but for the moment, this featured table does not support measures. So if you want to get the total sales, the total cost, etc., into the products table and or into the staff table, you need to create a calculated column from each measure. So to do that, go to new column. And you can say this is just uh, sales by veg equals just total sales like that. And let's create a couple more. Now, if you don't see is featured table, this is actually a preview feature at the moment. So you need to turn that on to do that. Go to file options and settings options. And then you'll need to go to preview features and make sure that this is ticked. Note that when you are ticking it for the first time, it will prompt you to restart. Publish it to Power BI Online. Choose a workspace as per usual. So I'm in Power BI Online and we're going to start by checking some admin settings. So click on these three dots, settings and admin portal. Then we're going to go to tenant settings and there's a few sort of important things. Uh, firstly, we should check the create work modern workspaces. And then we will need to make sure that you can export data that's enabled and export to Excel is also enabled and keep going. Certification, you need to enable certification because that is really important to allow for this to happen. Uh, featured tables only really follow through if they are marked as certified. And finally, allow connections to featured tables. Make sure that that's enabled. Then from here, let's go to the workspace itself. And then go to data sets and data flows. And let's go to featured table demo. You can see here uh, the endorsement column. So here you can see whether they are marked as certified because only the ones marked as certified can show up in Excel. 
So we're going to want to mark this as certified. So I'm going to go to settings after clicking those three dots. And then here, endorsement, I'm going to mark it as certified. You can have default, promoted or certified. They do look slightly differently in Power BI or in Excel when you explore it. Just a quick thing on a nuance with what happens where you've got a non-unique value. So on the right hand side, I have a another Power BI data set that is showing it in Excel. And on the left, I have uh, the Excel that's going to convert it. So on Power BI over here, you can see these icons. So these icons are showing up wherever this is a relevant column in a featured data set. Um, the category column is this one, and this actually has seven values. However, it's a bit of a nuance, but if I go to add the category here in Power BI, it actually just shows it as duplicates, which is not what Power BI should be. So just to show it to you here, if I uh, go to its feature table and I edit it, the way that that's set up is um, that the row label is category. This doesn't need to be unique. And the key column is just an index column. If you are going to do that, then you probably want to create a replica column, which I have done here with type. And if I drag that in, then that will just be the relevant data types. So to show the behavior in Excel, so if I select them and I go to data types and I choose selfie deaths. So then it loads up these ones and you can select which one you want. So there's multiple instances of transport. There's multiple instances of each one. So each one of these represents an actual row in the data. There's a couple of useful resources online. So this one allows you to explain what's going on and how to set it from the Power BI side of things. Essentially what I've shown you in this video. Notice this is out of date because it says featured tables that use the following capabilities aren't shown in Excel row level security data sets. However, that got superseded in the June update that says row level security is now supported for features tables. So it is a little bit out of date. Uh, and finally, access Power BI feature tables in Excel. So this is how you can access it from the Excel side and a few different things that you need to bear in mind. If you like this video, then I have plenty more videos on PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more.